Today we'll look at partitioning matrices to simplify matrix operations. So what we can do, if we look at the matrix A, we can partition this into four matrices. So maybe I can take A11 as this matrix, and then A12 can be this vector, and this is A21, and this is A22. So you can partition it however you like. And similarly, I can do the same for B. So B, I can, for example, partition as follows. So I can take this as our B11. And then this here is B21. And then we can take this one as B12. And this one here as B22. Now, alternatively, I can actually represent the matrix A using row vectors. So in this case over here, the row vector A1 is effectively A11, A12, and A13. And the same thing for A2. So A2 will be the second row, and A3 will be the third row of that matrix. And we can also represent the matrix A using column vectors. So in that case, A1 is effectively the first column in the matrix. So that will be A11, A21, and A31. And the same thing we can do for A2, so that will be A12, A22, and A32, and so on. So suppose we want to perform a multiplication, so multiply A by B. Well, we can write this as A multiplied by the matrix of column vectors. Okay, so that will be B1, B2, and B3. Okay, so what we get is A multiplied by the column vector B1, and then A by the column vector B2, and A by the column vector B3. So can you see that this is going to give us the product of A and B? So for example, if we look at A multiplied by B1, so that's effectively equal to the matrix A by this column vector over here. Okay, so A11 by B11 plus A12 by B21 and then plus A13 by B31. So what this has given us is the element in the resulting matrix C in the first row and first column. Okay, and you can continue multiplying A, so the second row, by the vector B. So that's going to give us C21. And then multiplying the third row by that vector is going to give us C31. So what this product here gives us is the first column of the resulting matrix C. And similarly, if you multiply this matrix A by the column vector B2, which is this one here, so that's going to give us the elements of the resulting matrix in the second column. So we can look at this as the vector C in column 1, and this will be C in column 2, and this will be C in column 3. So really have a go at multiplying these out to really get the hang of it. So we can also represent this same product of matrices using the row vectors of A. Okay, so what I can do is represent the matrix A using these row vectors. And then multiply this by matrix B. Okay, so in this case, the row vector A1 is just this vector over here. And the row vector A2 is this vector with these elements here. And the row vector A3 has the elements in the third row of the matrix A. So the result that this is going to give is effectively A1 by B. So that gives us the first row 
and then a2 by b is going to give us the second row of the resulting matrix C. And finally, A3 by B is going to give us the third row of the resulting matrix. So for example, if we multiply A1 by B, so remember that A1 has one row and three columns, and the matrix B has three rows and three columns. Okay, so because the number of rows in B is equal to the number of columns in A. Well, that's a valid matrix multiplication. So our resulting vector is going to be a 1 by 3. So it's going to have one row and three columns. And as we can see, the first product, so when we have A1 by B, so if we multiply A1 here by this matrix, well, what we start off is multiplying A11 by B11 plus A12 by B21 plus A13 by B31. So that gives us the element in the first row and first column of C. And now if we multiply this row vector by the second column, well that's going to give us the element C12, and then multiplying the same row vector by the third column is going to give us C13. And then you can do the same thing by multiplying the other row vectors to give us the next two rows of the resulting matrix C. Okay, so that's one application of partitioning matrices to simplify matrix operations. And I'll see you in the next video.